You are listening to the Forcecom Frontline, bringing you to our soldiers on the front lines of readiness. Hey everyone, welcome to the Forcecom Frontline. I'm Ashley and I'm your host. And today I am joined by Command Sergeant Major Todd Sims, and he is our Forcecom Command Sergeant Major. So thank you, Sergeant Major Sims, for joining me. Yeah, awesome. It's great to be here. So it's been a while since you've been on the podcast. You were on like when we first started more than a year ago. Yep. Um, so now that you've been in the position a little bit young, longer, I'm interested to get your, your perspective that from the Sergeant Major seat. What, how is Forcecom doing? What, what's Forcecom looking like? Uh, so it's, it's actually two years and one day that I've actually been wow. on the job. So <laughs> it's uh, indeed uh, from uh, two years ago to now, we've, uh, we've, we've seen continued readiness. So yeah. we're, we're still, we still have ready units. So, I mean, case in point, look at the 82nd. Since I've been in the job, they've uh, deployed no notice four times. Right. 18th Airborne Corps, no notice deployed. Yeah. Um, so that takes ready soldiers. And, and thinking, thinking about the other things we've done to help us uh, support our partners there in Europe, you think of 1-3, the 3rd Infantry Division. Uh, seven days from notification to they were uh, in Grafenbeer, Germany, uh, drawing vehicles and going to the range in Grafenbeer. So, you know, that doesn't happen without readiness. And and, uh, and it doesn't happen without uh, commanders focused on uh, on, on the, our boss's guidance about you know you're going to be ready. Yeah. You know readiness is uh, people readiness and modernization. And even with the modernization piece going on inside of Forces Command, uh, we still have the ability to train. And if called upon, we could still move out. I.e., uh, uh, that that brigade there in Third ID. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, it, it's we've grown a lot. Uh, we fought through COVID. Um, and uh, soldiers still did training during COVID. So, I mean, it, it's, been, it's been phenomenal to watch. And uh, other things that to think about, uh, I like highlighting our, our, what our divisions are doing. 10th Mountain Division did a great job. Uh, with, they call it E3B. So it's the EIB, the Expert Soldier Badge, and also the EFMB. So they've kind of set a standard for other units to follow. And other units like the 82nd right now is, is doing the E3B here at, here at Fort Bragg. So, you know, it, it, it's all about the expertise at the uh, at this, the soldier level, the platoon level, and the company level. And we're doing a great job. And it's been it's been awesome to watch going to both the training centers and trying to get out to every rotation uh, and and watching our squads and platoons operate and watching our battalions and our brigades get better and better after after reps after reps so it, it's a uh, it, we are definitely still producing a lot of readiness inside of forces command to support the combatant commands well and you said something important i think this is the, the 82nd has deployed four times immediate response and COVID is happening i mean we aren't necessarily out of no. COVID yet and so they have been able to maintain that readiness through all of that and I think that's a testament to you know their leadership and and what they're doing um, so yeah just to add on to that yeah. a little bit um, but you also mentioned that you know you're going out to see CTC rotations um, and so you're you're on the ground talking to soldiers what what are you hearing from them uh, so I think you, you, what you hear from a, a soldier is, is they're excited because they're actually doing their job. Yeah. Uh, you know, because if you think back uh, all those years ago, it's kind of funny to say, I mean, in the height of COVID, when people weren't doing that much. And, and idle time for a soldier is not a good thing. Right. So if we keep them engaged and busy doing their, their uh, basic skill level one task, you know, that, that's their job, so they're excited yeah. to do it. And if, if we, you know, and it's what's great, I, I love to think about the 82nd, I mean, because not only because they're on Fort Bragg, either, <laughs> either on Mondays or Fridays I do a long run. So I'll run up Normandy, then I'll hit Ardennes, and I'll come back down uh, Long Street. Uh, but to, to see the difference between two years ago to today, uh, you know, because COVID and, yeah. and, you know, they realized, hey, we have to fight through this. We, we wear a mask. We're going to do what we right. have to do, but we still have to get out and get after physical training. But you think about, I mean, like last uh, last Friday when I did my long run, it, th there was paratroopers everywhere on uh, on Ardennes, yeah. on, on Normandy, on Long Street. So <laughs> and, uh, they're out there, you know. Doing, doing what we asked them to do, be physically fit. Yeah. And, um, and actually, it, it's, it's great to see, and it's so exciting. Even when I go to visit other, uh, other camps, posts, and stations, uh, you know, I'm going to tell a 10th Mountain story. I so love 10th Mountain. I, on, Thursday, <laughs> on Thursdays, they, do, they call it Foot March Thursday. So 
last two times I visited was on a Thursday, so I could do a foot march nice. with the division sergeant major. <laughs> and, uh, and to see the whole division out there actually conducting a foot march was awesome. That's awesome. The band was out there. Oh. The, the, the band first sergeant had, had the, like the band's guide on, and it was leading, That's leading awesome. that team. And they, had, they were on full kit, and they had weapons too. So it, 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 it's just amazing to see what, what our, our, our teammates are doing across the force. Yeah, we just had General Beagle on, and we had an amazing conversation with him. And I'm biased. I grew up in Fort uh -huh. Drum, so <laughs> they're one of my favorites. But um, I was going to go somewhere with that. Um, you know what? I'll skip it. And okay. let's go to best squad competition. No, I'm going to go back. I'm okay. sorry. Engaged leadership. We're talking about um, getting out there and talking to soldiers. And we talk a lot about engaged leadership. The CG mentioned it yesterday in the CMF that... Um, you know, it starts at PT. It starts yep. first thing in the morning. Uh, what are you seeing out there when you are talking to soldiers and, and seeing that leadership? Are you, is it is it catching on? Is it something that's happening? Yeah, so I think it, it, presence matters. Uh, you heard General Papa say yesterday, presence matters. Yeah. And, you know, even even with me, like being out there, that, that's that that's showing that you know Absolutely. we're actually engaged and, and we care about what what what's going yeah. on in, inside of Forces Command. But you know, it, it's become infectious across the Army. Uh, not only in, in Forces Command, but in TRADOC. I mean, you see leaders actually out there spending time with their soldiers, yeah. which is important because that builds that team. Absolutely. And if you know the members of your team, you know something's wrong one day with that member of that team, you can uh, actually engage and, and help yeah. help them. But, you know, presence matters, and uh, that, hence the reason I, I'm TDY so much. I have to go out and see uh, all, all of our, our team in Forces Command. Uh, but it, it's well worth doing it. And uh, so you know, we learned a long time ago from, uh, from a first sergeant who is now, now retired, but and we still keep in contact. He retired as a sergeant major. But I, I watched how he would, like, he showed empathy he, he cared about the, 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 the soldiers in his formation. And it's like, you know, I'm gonna write that down in my green book because that's what I wanna do yeah. when, when I get to that level. And uh, ever since I, I've been a first sergeant, uh, ever since I've been an NCO really, modeling myself to actually spend time with, participate with, share hardships with my, my team. Yeah. You know, that builds that, that lifelong friendship, if you will, because thinking about, uh, I still, 126 infantry you know, i'm a blue spader for life i, I deployed twice <laughs> with those those guys and i still keep in contact with that team and i actually did a podcast with them if you remember oh yeah yeah uh, but it's uh it's amazing just the little little things that we can do to actually show the soldiers that we care well and the cg mentioned it yesterday i know we keep going back to that but he talked about the human dimension yeah. we all want to feel appreciated i think we all want to feel like you know i'm not just coming to work every day for nothing um so yeah um Best squad competitions coming up. Oh yeah. The units have been doing it. They, I, I think, they're mostly done. The divisions. I think the uh, 18th Airborne Corps is doing theirs right now at Fort Stewart. Yep. Okay, so this is new. We didn't do the best squad competition last year. We did best warrior. So can you just, you know, why, why the change to the best squad, and why is it important to recognize the squad? It's it. it, it you got to harken back to a few years ago when, when the SMA first became the, the 16th SMA of the Army. He uh, said, this is my squad. Yeah. Not, you know, remember the not in my squad thing. Yeah, but yeah, This yeah. is my squad. So this, this is just a, a culminating event to say, hey, these five individuals are the best squad in the United States Army. And I think it's, uh, the, the reason the change is, is that because you know, we're, we're squad centric. You know, yeah. like you heard General McConville say today, you know, you know, Majors think in, in grand strategy and general officers think about squads and platoons. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's important to showcase uh, how, how well our squads are doing out there. And this is just a great way to do it. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit harder for us because we have to bring more people <laughs> right, in for the competition. Sure. But it, it's, it's going to be, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to yield a, a greater product because other squads are going to see that and say, we want to do that yeah, next time. Absolutely. So I think uh, th this will be a good good stepping stone as we run the competition there at Fort Hood, and then uh, the Army's competition is actually going to be right here in Fort Bragg. I so. we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, what can I know? You can't go into details about what the competition will will do or what they will have to do, but what can we expect? What sort it's, of things? It's going to be tough, um, especially with uh, the heat at Fort Hood. Yeah. Uh, but you know, so I, I need them. I need all those folks to drink lots of water, <laughs> and uh, you know, be ready. Make sure you're eating the right foods because it, it's going to it's going to be a, a tough competition. You're, you're going to do a lot of walking. You're going to do some land navigation. Okay. You're going to do some warrior task and battle drills. 
We're uh, going to have a couple mystery events in there. All I'm not right. going to tell you what they nope. are, but uh, <laughs> I know you guys will be on the ground with us, so we'll have good coverage yeah. uh, when, when those teammates or that, that those squads are going through that competition. But it, it, it's geared to get them ready uh, for the next one, but it's also geared for us to be able to pick that best squad because with all those tasks they're going to do, you know, it's going to be graded, and you know, yeah. then they're going to come stand in front of a front of a board of SAR majors and answer questions. So <laughs> it's going it's to be a good week for them. That's awesome. I recently talked to the best EOD team of the year, yeah. and that was a great conversation. And watching them interact, you could tell that they just had a really good relationship and they trusted each other. And so I assume, or me, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think we'll see some of that with the best squad? Oh, yeah. And yeah. It's, it, it's just like the, uh, the best warrior and the best soldier competition. Th those, those two that, that won, They'll probably be friends for life, and then uh, yeah. so all these, as all the teams come across from forces, forces command, it's just you're you're meeting somebody else from another unit, but then it's somebody else that has a, an expertise that maybe one day down the road you'll need. So you met them at the competition. Hopefully you exchanged emails yeah. and phone numbers, and you can call them up, say I need help with this. Yeah, and, and it's it's just. It's, it's going to be great to bring all those people together. It, it's, in, it's in friendly competition. They sure. know you're competing against each other, but they build friendships out of that because they went through that shared hardship together. And that's exactly what the best uh, warrior, NCO and Soldier of the Year last year said. They, you know, they went and they learned so much just from the other competitors. Um, so it, it will be fun to watch, and we will have it on our, all oh, yeah. of our social media, um, and then we will we'll be sharing the Army one as well when that happens. Um, so switching gears a little bit. So the Future Soldier Prep Program was just announced, um, allowing potential soldier, future soldiers who might not meet all of the requirements mm -hmm. right now to go to this course and, and get to where they need to be to join the Army. What do you think about that program? Do you think it's gonna help us? Yeah, I, th I think it will because th there's, some, there's some young folks out there that really wanna serve. And, you know, maybe maybe they're a little bit over on, on body fat yeah. percentage or with with COVID and people uh, being at, at home instead of inside of a classroom, they've kind of, you know, that, that math skill, that, yeah. that, that thing, that thing that, you know, that teacher would would teach you about, you know, just wasn't getting taught because sure. they were on a computer screen. Sure. And so we, we want to ensure that the soldier or the, the young folks that want to serve, that that's a great program to actually get them in make them right and then you know yeah. they once they pass the the physical piece and also they pass the uh the, uh, the, the test piece yeah, the yeah. written piece is you know they could be a soldier in the united states army so i, I think it's a great great work a great initiative by uh trade doc and a great great uh really planned by the army to yeah. actually ensure that we get the right folks yeah. inside the army and we're not going to change standards it's right it's army's it's getting them make, to where they army's going to maintain our, our standards and we're going to ensure that we get those folks up to that standard so they can serve yeah you brought up a really good point though um the whole covid and being out of the classroom mm -hmm. that's something i would have never i i yeah. honestly didn't consider but it's something that now having going through all of it we really have to take into account yeah. um covid's really really changed our lives it in has. more than one way um, so we are almost out of time and I know you were busy here. Um, what haven't we talked about that you, you think we want to talk about? Um, so, uh, you know, thinking, thinking about readiness, but thinking about people, um, I, I think just, just for the force comp sergeant major to put it out, you know, people is our number one priority, Absolutely. but readiness is, is right behind it. And, uh, yeah. you know, time off doesn't always mean that we're, uh, you know, not taking care of people because we yeah. have to ensure that you're, you're you're proficient at your job and you're good at what you do. But all commanders at Echelon will take care of those soldiers and give yeah. them that time back, that time off, and, and right. things like that. Right. So you know, it's it's not lost lost on Star Major Sims that uh, you know there's some challenges out there, sure. and you know, and people reach out all the time, which I don't mind, and uh, <laughs> and I will actually you know look at each uh, each of the emails or take the phone calls and, and, and address issues as they, they come up. But uh, you know, every, everybody, uh, we have to be ready for whatever the next fight is. And you know, sometimes that takes uh, tough training. Yeah. And once you get through that tough training, your commanders at Echelon will take care of you, uh, either with rewards or time off or, or whatever your, your family needs are as well. But uh, I think uh, we're in tune right now. All, all the division commanders, Sergeant Major, and all the way down to that, those companies, they, they understand that, you know, that we have a mission and uh, yeah. we are in uncertain times, but uh, we're going to be trained and ready to go. 
Now you mentioned reaching out. When we talked last time on the podcast, you, you talked about um, you were out doing PT with a unit and you actually called that soldier's parent. Yep. Are you still doing that kind of stuff? Oh yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a highlight of my day, especially when I get to engage with uh, our, our, our young men and women in, in the Army. And it's, it, it makes their day to actually say, oh. you know, this, this guy really wants to call my parents. <laughs> I said, yeah, I mean, let's call your mom. Do you have really? a story you can really, share? Sorry, Major. Uh, it's a, I think the the last time I did it, it was uh, I was awarding somebody a coin for excellence, and uh, you know, it's, it, it's this ever happened as a four star? You know, this is on behalf of yeah. uh, General Pappas and myself. You know, is it? What do you think we uh, FaceTime uh, your parents while I give you this coin? They're like, what? That's awesome. And, you know, so we did it, and uh, and that, that family is very appreciative. Oh, and, I'm like, sure. They were great. It was great to see that their uh, their service member actually did something good. Yeah. Because you know parents worry like I don't know what they're really doing, but right. uh, <laughs> But it's good. It's good to highlight that, and it uh, it sets it sets a tone for other people around to say, yeah, that, that's a good idea. Absolutely. I mean, you don't have to do it, but it's just yeah. it's just something to actually tie that family into uh, into what their service member is doing in the army. I think that's awesome, and I'm sure that that's something that soldier is not going to forget. No. That's amazing. Well, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. Um, yeah. It's been so long since you've been on. Maybe we can do this again in not so before you leave. How about that? Yeah, just <laughs> let me know. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Thank you.